Oh no, it's not recording. Yeah. So for the timing, this is how we go by uh, for international table topics and evaluation. Let's move on a bit just to speed things up. Now, before we begin, even as a contestant, really test your sound and video system. If you notice that your sound and video system is actually having issues, fix it immediately. Okay, I will I'll repeat, fix it immediately. So how do you know that uh, for everyone, I'll just stop share for a bit. Now go to your bottom left-hand corner. That should be a mute button, right? Now on the mute button itself, beside it, there is an arrow going upward, like an upward arrow. Click on it. Now you should see something called the audio options. Click on it, and there's a button called Test Computer Mics and Speakers. Make sure you do the test first, okay? And see how the loudest that you can project, because the louder you can get, there will be some echoing issues. So you need to test the maximum sound impact that you can go for. If you shout online, will it be bursting with echoes from the audience perspective? So we need to care about this tiniest details to deliver a very nice refined speech. So you can actually do a testing later on. Now for the stop video, there's also another arrow which shows video settings. The video settings whereby you can actually beautify yourself by clicking on the button, touch up on my appearance. is good choice for girls, especially. You can look prettier on the screen. And most importantly, that you can actually check whether it's high definition or not, so that we can reduce the negatives in there. So the stop video button, there should be a video settings. Okay, if you do not have that beautifying effect, it's still fine, upgrade it, update it, okay? That will help you so much more. Now back to this slide that I'm gonna share. Check video settings, check the upper button. So we just did the sound check, etc. And if, if you happen to have your audio or video down at that moment, don't panic. Your phone will be your backup. I repeat, your phone will be your backup. Your phone can utilize it for webcam or you can utilize it for audio, one or the other. Okay, do not use both because I highly strongly recommend uh, to use the laptop instead of the phone because you have more functions. Uh, compared to a phone, you can see up to four people. In a laptop, you can see up to 25 people in the gallery view. Now remember to rename yourself, simple, basic, adequate, uh, to rename yourself so that the judges, or no, so that the Zoom master will know who you are. And this is the magical button whereby you can choose the speaker or the gallery view. I highly recommend to go for the gallery view because you can see everyone with only one exception. Do not use gallery view if you have more than 25 participants in that room. Okay, let me explain why. If you're going to have more than 25 participants in that room, then you need to click on the arrow. If you notice on the arrows, you see that this part has an arrow, right? It's, it should be in blue. Do you see there are arrows? Your timer might be gone off screen, will be on the other page, etc. Okay? So if you have more than 25, then I highly suggest to go for speaker view. If you have less than 25, go for gallery view. Simple, one or the other. Because the gallery view actually gives more interaction, give you the presence that there are lots of people there. Now, still the basic stuff. Um, for laptop versions and the mobile versions, you need to know your breakout rooms because they, you will be shifted to the contest room, most likely. So these are the two buttons that you need to know uh, for a bit. And for phones, uh, if you're using phone and you cannot find your timer, don't worry. Use something called the pin video function. You can use your phone, find someone that you like. Obviously, I'm not spotlighting myself right now. Let everyone at least try out the, those buttons. Find something, find someone that is actually switching on the webcam, tap twice on your phone, and that should appear as the biggest screen in your phone right now. This is only for phone. If you're using a laptop, move your mouse over to your timer or someone that you want to look at. Click on the three little dots that is hovering over that person's screen. Click on pin video, and that's how we pin that person. Usually we pin the timer just in case we went over time. And finally, please do not click the leave room because you do not know where you go in the end. Disconnections, contest chair or chief judge, call them, tell them the situation, get back to the room. This is basic stuff now. 
Now we move on to the 10 amazing tips that we have just gone through just now. Three, one, repeat. Your webcam is your friend. Say it with your heart, okay? You don't need to unmute yourselves. Your webcam is your friend. So make friends with your webcam, okay? Your webcam is your friend. This is what happens at pool examples. You do not want them to be uh, literally affecting how the judges perceive you as. If they see your mouth, then they can't see your face. You know what happens, okay? Now, two is testing the stage. We just did that stage practice. Remember the stage practice that we've done? Standing up, sitting a bit further away so that I can see your overview, okay? You can actually project your voice as well to actually test your microphones, know your stage. This is where by the tip number two is knowing your stage or called test your stage. So as long as you appear confident or your gestures are visible, you are good enough for contest. Now three, we have went through this before all about avoid speaking too fast or moving too fast. Why do we have to avoid speaking or moving too fast? Please type in the chat box to check whether you've learned something from the practice that we have just done. Why do we have to avoid speaking or moving too fast? Type in the chat box so I know that you, you have listened to the class today. Yes, to avoid the lagginess because lagginess is actually your top enemy in online contests. You do not want your lagginess when you're performing so well and suddenly the judges mark you so badly because you appear to be laggy on your screen. Okay, you need to prevent and reduce the impact of lagginess. This is what happens when we see lag. You can see different images that may appear on your screen. Now, the fourth thing is about power of connection. When I say power of the connection, uh, I need to do a live demonstration instead. The power of connection when you're doing on spot is there are three ways. One, using words. Like for example, I am angry right now. Now, if you are feeling like, yeah, you are audience and you hear me saying this word, how would you feel? Do you feel angry as well? Or you feel that, oh, yeah, nothing, it's, it's just Aaron. It's just a usual Aaron. Words can impact people. Remember the world champion speaker that says about, about the words can give, you, can give you high lifts and then words can bring you down. Who is that speaker? If you have been paying attention to world champion speaker. The power of words, yes. The power of words is also impactful online. Yes, he has been doing a lot of workshops these days, just saying. The power of words actually impact lots of things. So power of words is also a connective factor online. So use simple connective words that will get through your audience, okay? Now, also one more thing about to connect people is your gestures. The practice of gestures. Know your stage. If you want to say, let me bring my heart to you and I want to know you more. Now, now, this is a way whereby I want to connect with you online. This is how I usually do. And do you feel that I'm connecting with you at that moment? Like, let me try to get to know you better. Can I? Like, do you feel that I'm trying to try to know you or connect with you? If you do, please give me a thumbs up. Or you feel that yeah, Aaron is just bullshitting. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Anthony, for reflecting on that part. <laughs> just joking. So, so usually when we do... Uh, gestures, do it slowly and we can actually bring more impact, is uh, outreaching and bringing that connection. Okay. Now, one more idea that for us to connect is that, let me see whether I have that little thing, is the use of props. The props that you can use. Okay. In online world, even in online contests, who says that you can't bring props? You can. Okay. Literally, you can. The downside is that do not let the prop take away your spotlight. This is called blocking you, okay? This is called taking away your spotlight. So make sure when you're doing online contests, you can get your toy as everything, your stuffed pillow and stuff, and use that to enhance your speech or connection online. Because they may find like a Mickey Mouse. Anyone love Mickey Mouse here? I don't, but anyone likes like likes it or find it's okay. Yes, we see some people liking it. If I put someone uh, something like, um, let me think, 
Uh, any toys that I think is cute? Olive. Uh, the can I get you the snowman? I forgot how to sing that, but yeah, that snowman toy. Do you feel connected to Frozen one? Yes. I want to be the snowman. That one, that 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 toy. Uh, then you can actually bring that connection. Oh, that guy is using Olive. Yes, props can bring connections. Just saying. Now let's get back to their slides for that. So power of connection. Remember the three little tips that we talk about within this tip number four. What are they? What are the three things that we can use to connect our audience? Type it in the chat box so that I know that you are learning right now. Yes, my gestures are too fast. I apologize because I'm still trying to catch my breath. <laughs> Words, gestures, props. Yes, correct. Great job. So now you're more ready for the next part. Tip number five. Always think about the power of simplicity. Why? Even in prepared speech, if we overcomplicate things, that I'm not using a layman's wordings. If I'm using a chemical term that no one understands, then I have time to try to digest what you're saying, remember the nagginess part, and try to digest what that word is. So double the difficulty. So your simple words will get you a long run, okay? Will get you far, literally. So your simple words online. Simplicity is always the key. So repeat after me, simplicity is always the key. Simplicity is always the key. When you're doing your speech, we want to digest it in the simplest possible manner. I want to be part of your story as well. But then let me try to understand it. If I don't understand, how am I supposed to catch up with your pace? So simplicity is the key for that. Next, who loves tall tales here? You can raise up your hand. I know I, I saw Gary loves it. Do you always love tall tales or do you want to hear someone that speaks genuinely to you? Which one would you like, Gary? Both? Yeah, kind of. So speak genuinely actually gets more crowd because quite a lot of people don't like false story. Unless the false story actually creates imagination, that's a different story. That's why we have tall tales. The imaginative part is the key to win. But when we're talking about speak genuinely, it's about true stories will get you far. Because speak genuinely attracts crowd. If you speak forcefully, uh, either you have a great imagination that attracts crowd, or uh, you're trying to try your best to impress the people. That's actually backfiring on you. So I usually use all my true stories to convey to others. So speak genuinely to people. You do not need to make people to feel connected. They are more willing themselves to connect with you. Okay, so tip number six, repeat after me, speak genuinely, okay? Now tip number seven is actually pretty useful. Uh, it's called widening your stage. Some of us may think that, yes, I'm in the house. My stage is limited. How am I supposed to get the maximum out, outreach on my stage? This is a tip whereby you can see on your right hand screen, this is a, uh, White lens camera. This is an additional prop that I will actually prepare for myself if I'm going for a contest. I will actually add something called the white lens camera to make myself uh, having more space because of the comfort on our eyes for the audience. So this is what happens if you can see the comparison. Uh, these are two images. One is without the lens from the white angle lens. The other one is the white lens. What is the difference? You can see more, right? You can literally see more of that person. So when you have this white lens over here, it gives an extra advantage, not just to you, but also to the judges for comfort. Usually that is additional to that. It's my secret too for online contests. It gives an additional point of impact. If you have limited space, this will solve your problem. Now tip number eight. No, obviously it's still seven, my bad. It's the camera whereby if you're using a laptop camera and you want to find a better one to make yourself look more professional, uh, these are my free recommendations that I've tried and feel quite useful. 
Uh, Logitech is the one that I usually use for my lifetime so far. I find it so good that it's very reliable and save a lot of my sessions. For today, I'm not using Logitech. For today, it's just for demonstration purpose. Usually, I have a Logitech that's attached next to it, but I don't have time. Remember that I run back, run back home just to do the training. So having a Logitech is okay. Microsoft Live Cam is actually tested. Uh, it gives a very nice um, color lighting on your, on your screen. Even if you're having a very poor lighting in your background, that actually enhances it a bit. So Genius is like the type whereby if you throw the camera on the floor, like Nokia, if you throw the camera on the floor, it won't break that much. So it actually, pre it has a preventive measure for that. So these three are reliable in some sense. Eight, this is a good point. Personalize your stage. Why personalize? Because you are the brand in this stage. You are your own brand. We want to see you being different or special or something that means it's Gary's speech. Oh, it's Selena's speech. It's Hazel's speech. Give us the vibe of how, how we get to know you through personalization. So this is something that I usually do, uh, just for a demonstration purpose. You can see that now I'm having lots of clothes at my back, right? You can see that my clothes are all thrown in the back. It's very messy, right? It's not that good looking on my screen. It's going to be very bad for contest. So what I'm going to do now uh, is that I usually do, Marama definitely saw it before, Selena also saw it uh, before, is that I use something called the Sparkle Saw. Now, be amazed of how I can turn things into different impact. So first of all, I want to appear to be a bit like um, magical to everyone. I will summon a lion just to dance on my background. And now here it goes. And basically my webcam is not attached because I haven't clicked on that webcam yet. Now can you see it now? Can everyone see this? Give me a thumbs up if you see it. So this is actually something that, can you see my clothes now? No, right? I simply have a cover up for that. So this is whereby we want to make ourselves having personalized. You, see, you, you might not see a lion, but I want to just, just give it a bit bigger for you, okay? And remember the lion is actually just a prop. It's just my buddy over here on my prop. It's about how you actually customize your tools to the maximum impact. But I just want to go back to my original side. Uh, of things because I'm just being genuine. So my clothes are still back there. So this is a, a few tools that you can utilize. Some of us may use something called the virtual background. Anyone use virtual background here? I know our Tong Chung friend over there definitely use it. Uh, so virtual background is an optional. This is just recommendation. But if you use a virtual background and you do not have the right requirements, this is what happens. Do you see that my half my face, half my stage is in this? You can see my, my hands are hollowish as well. Can you see my hands? This is a side impact because I do not fulfill the requirements. Yes, I fulfill, I fulfill the requirements of being a ghost, literally. So virtual green screen or cameras are used with care. Do rehearsals before that. Okay, let me explain why this is not happening for me. Because of virtual background wise, it requires this. Let me share my screen again. So you see that this lovely girl is actually having a nice requirement because she has fulfilled that requirement. What has she fulfilled? So when we do the choose virtual background, you can actually test it right now and see whether it works for you. That should be a virtual background button for you. You can actually try it now. There's no, nothing wrong with not trying it. So these are the positive impacts of how you will appear on the screen. So Anna actually tried it, it's pretty good. Uh, for everyone else, you can try it. Uh, it's, it's just a practice for everyone. This is what happens if everything is running okay, okay? You can be in somewhere in Dubai or somewhere personalized, you can have fun. This is whereby you want to give the fun vibe. Now what happens if you go wrong, right? Just now my, my ghostly figure becomes a wrong impact or, or an example for everyone. Why do I not fulfill the requirements? Because my background is not white, blue, or green in full. So for Anthony, for example, he's not in 
white, blue, or green in full, his cupboard will not fit the green screen. Okay? And moreover, you need to have a good lighting. If you do not fulfill one, two, which is colors, and two, a lighting, then you cannot do a green screen. For those of you who can do a green screen right now, congratulations, because you have good lightings and you have good background colors. But you cannot always have these colors, right? If I'm doing a speech outside, I cannot find a background that's white, blue, and green exactly at that moment. Yes, Anthony actually tried something called, let me, let me spotlight Anthony for a bit. This is something that I will actually do if I'm desperate, okay? This is what I will do if I'm desperate. So Anthony actually do something called the uh, do-it-yourself uh, lighting, DIY lighting, meaning that you put your torch light close to you so that you look a bit more warm and clear. So this is good lighting, but your background still doesn't fit the requirements, if you notice, because your cupboard is brown. Just saying. So if you want to try the lightings, you can try it now. It's still okay. Take it on your own risk because I want to give the nice branding for myself. So for, let's say, Daryl, Daryl actually did a, not a good example, actually. He, uh, the reason why is because he over, he, this is called overexposure, the lightings. Do not put the lightings too close to you, okay? Put it a bit further away so that you have that lightings that is making you feel warm. Let me demonstrate a bit of how it goes. So now I'm gonna let everyone not see my clothing, but something that I usually do, which is called lighting. So you see that my, my face is a bit like a bit dark, right? This is what I do. Is it better? I will position myself at least there is a distance. So I need to find a phone stand. If, if not, it will be like this. Would you like to have a this kind of speech? You wouldn't want that to happen. Okay, so you want to position yourself a bit further away. So the lighter, the lighting is warm on you instead of overexposure. Okay, this is actually a DIY solution for you if you want to have a good lighting. Everyone clear so far and everyone follow so far of my workshop? You can give me a thumbs up. Thank you. Good for set. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now I'm going to demonstrate a ghost tale. Welcome to this ghost festival. <laughs> I, I'm not, <laughs> I'm just doing a demonstration, but yeah. But it's about having the vibe there. Let me just continue on that. Good lightings and other options such as many cams or sparkle cams that may personalize your own stage. So what is this point again? Personalize your own stage. The wordings. Let's repeat after me, okay? Personalize your own stage. Let them know more about you. Because one of the key reasons why lots of winners win in contests is because from an audience perspective, uh, from the audience perspective, I get to know the speaker more. Different elements. The more that I know, the better. I want to know the deepest secrets or the, the funniest jokes or the funniest incident that happened in your life. I'm going to get a good laugh. I get to know you. I'll give you points. Simple. Now, tip number nine is what usually when we do it for district levels, uh, a couple of my friends will tell you, uh, please dress properly and appear professional on the screen. Oh no, on the stage itself. And Yes, it plays an impact. I remember when I go for a district contest, I wear slippers. Yes, I wear slippers. And I did wear a pajama because I was late for the contest. I, wa I wasn't using it as a dress up, okay? That was not my intention. But I was running down because I was late. I do not want to get disqualified. I want to draw my ballots. I was appearing in my pajamas. But then that is not a good impression that you're setting. So do it a bit like more posh, more friendly, more professional. And these are some other tools that will help you there. Okay, if I'm gonna see this lovely lady, because not because of she's pretty, because of her equipment, you can see her equipment there, and it's on the screen, I will think that, wow, this lady is professional. I would like to give her points because she's well prepared for this contest. So this, although it's not listed in the contest rule book itself, I mean the, the point system, but to the judges, they feel they want to give points for this person because she has prepared well, literally. 
think about having a professional kit. Um, if you are going for a lifetime of contest, yes, it's worth the investment. Or you can see people actually prepare themselves with green screens, with a green backdrop at there, so they can do a green virtual background. And see the slidings over here, is it better than the, the mobile phone that we're using just now? About using a torch light and flashing on you? This is how they prepare for the contest. The same for some people. This will give them an extra age. Now, tip number 10 is very simple, is that online contest is just like any other contest. The best trick in life for contest itself is always do a smile. Let's, let's smile. I, I, if you guys are having a bad day, try to smile a bit. It will change your mood for it, even with the slightest impact. So smile in front of camera for like the next five to 10 seconds. I can still see Luna being unhappy. Yo, now when you smile, it just builds that connection as well. Because like you're being very pleasant, you're being kind of welcoming as well. It gives a nice sensation that even if you're nervous because you smile, that's why they give you the positive points. Sorry, Lynn. Thank you. So let me get back to my slides. So smile and have fun. Now I'm gonna give extra bonus tips because just because you are here. Tip number 11, which I prepared. Keep rehearsing and be comfortable. Keep rehearsing and be comfortable. Because if I'm gonna ask a question for everyone, you can actually reply to me uh, in, in the chat box. Would you be comfortable if you are speaking at home or would you be comfortable if you're speaking in a graveyard or a forest, maybe. When I say forest, it means dark forest. Some people would like the challenge of putting the word forest there or even like the graveyard uh, because they are more adventurous. They are used to parks. They're used to go into forests for heights. Now, we all have our comfort zones here. We used to do speeches at home because we feel comfortable because home is our first comfy place. Now treat the home or treat anywhere as comfortable as your home. If you're able to treat the whole stage as comfortable as you feel you are, then basically you're treating yourself at home and become more relaxing. You can be much more connected to people, etc. Just like all the world champions, before they go up to the stage, let me ask, let me interview Mirama for a bit. Like, I know she hasn't been to, uh, she isn't a world champion yet, but let me interview her for a bit. Mirama, uh, let me ask you a question. Do you go, do you walk the stage a few times before you go for contest? Oh yeah. Um, as soon as, I, I, I am not a world champion, um, <laughs> but um, I've, been to district a couple of times and I've done, uh, I went to semifinals um, two years ago. And yeah, as soon as you're allowed to walk the stage, you walk on the stage, you walk up and down and you get as comfortable as you can in that place to know what you're doing. So why, why do you have to do this practice then? Why do you have most to? Walk? People, most people do. Uh, most people do to get the feel of how, um, how their speech feels on that stage. Same thing as walking on the stage of your own home. I would suggest everyone, when you're doing, remember the practice that we have done at the start, whereby I ask everyone to stand up and do a mock trial of speeches. Walk your own stage, okay? Make as if that you are doing that speech right now. You know that you're gonna win that championship. So make sure that you feel comfortable and be yourself on the stage, okay? So I, walking stage. Am I still muted? Can I add something to yours there? Why not? Go for it. <laughs> um, I was going to say, I've started, um, I've learned that you can actually go into Zoom and record yourself. Yes, you can. So you can. You can go into Zoom and just practice your speech and record yourself doing your speech on Zoom as if, as if it was to an audience, but it's just yourself and you record yourself and then you can look back at it and so you can figure out everything that Aaron's talking about 
with your space and um, your stage, you mm. can figure that out by yourself, by recording yourself on Zoom. So I recommend everybody who's a contestant, go into Zoom, you host your own meeting just with yourself. You don't, you don't need to invite anybody. Host your own meeting and press record. Record yourself doing your, spe your speech in your own little Zoom meeting by yourself. And then you go back and look at it and you can see what you're doing and you can see how everything Aaron has said fits in with your own speech that way. Yep, and adding one more point for that is that you become your evaluator. Remember we did that practice about being that evaluator for Maroma just now? That practice is that you are evaluating your own speech mm -hmm. and you are going to critique as much and as harshly as a judge, okay? Because you are the best audience for yourself. So when you record the speech, look at what you went wrong, try to focus on the improvements that you can make overcome it that's why we say keep rehearsing okay the only consideration that i think is missing from this bonus tip here is that recording yourself is easier than competing live stage because recording yourself you just need your own bandwidth if you don't mind please mute yourself Thank you very much. So when you're recording yourself, you're only counting on your own bandwidth, okay? It's not on others' bandwidth. But when you're competing online, you need to consider the tips that I mentioned just now. Slow it down and make sure that people can understand. Remember the gestures that I'm talking about, the slow pace, the pace, the impact. Do it stronger instead of faster. Those tips will surface. Everyone clear? And give me a thumbs up if you, if you follow me through. Thank you. Now, finally, the last tip. You need to visualize your win. You need to visualize that if you win the district champion, if you win the international champion, you see that you are holding the cup of being the champion in the world. You need to visualize that, okay? If you do not have a clear goal, you lose half the battle. Visualize your win in an online contest because contests are meant just to be your better self, competing with yourself. So if you visualize a win that I'm better than myself, I know that I'm going to get that championship, go and get it. My objective in this workshop for today is other than getting you guys, everyone here, to be excellent contestants, is that I want to help you to race to your goals with these tips today. Because I believe everyone can actually reach that potential. It's not that I see something new because I didn't see anything yet. Because I'm not done Jaya. But I believe in you. That you can utilize all the skills and exercise that win. Because I can't compete this year. So I hope that you can win your own contest. Because as an area director, I can't. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll be competing this year. Yes, I'm going to win this this time, etc. Like just like last year, no, just like two years ago, I won the joint online contest, etc. So, online club contest because I have like different online clubs join together, have a contest. Yes, I visualize my win, but now it's your turn. Visualize your win, okay? It's yours, not mine. What I'm doing here is coaching you. Well, not say coaching, but giving you some tips that you can bring home and practice. This there are twelve tips here, okay? The next thing that I'm going to ask you to do right now is that. Next thing that I'm going to ask you is that out of these 12 tips, just do one to two per week. Or if you want to practice in hot call per two days or so, just pick one or two. Do not stress all 12 together, okay? Just pick one or two that you feel that, yes, I'm going to practice tomorrow, okay? Use that tip and focus on how you can improve on that tip. Now, Finally, it's the end of my workshop for today. So I hope that everyone learned something and you can ask your questions right now. Uh, if you want to ask from a contestant perspective, if you feel that you like this, you can give me a thumbs up at the very least. If you don't like it, then you can just like Aaron, go away. I don't want to listen to your workshop next time. <laughs> now, uh, I would like to uh, open the floor uh, for questioning. I, I will give around like 10 to 15 minutes for questioning so that I'm not being integrated, but uh, but you can ask questions. 
in a very warm and friendly manner, okay? So anyone wants to ask a question, you can actually raise your hand or you can actually type, oh, yes, we have our Dong Chong friend over here. Aaron, hello, thank you so much for a wonderful workshop today. I know you are very busy and you ran through and came back very fast. Thank you again. Uh, you see, here I have a, this is a projected curtain behind me. So, and I, uh, I think, uh, one minute, let me open it for you. And uh, I have some nice place at my house. So later, uh, is it possible I will fix it up and take some screenshot or video and send to you for your comments? Yes, you can, definitely. And then the thing is that, can you actually switch on your uh, green screen again, again, the virtual background? Oh, the green screen? No, the virtual background. Just now you did it, right? The white one or yes, the, the blue uh, one? Yes, the blue one. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, everyone pay attention. Look at look at our Dong Chong friend, which is basically very proficient. I hear his speech before. Now, move your hands. Move your hands. Okay. Now, see what happened. Now, keep on moving a bit of your hands slowly. Okay. Now, let me ask everyone a question. Is the technology helping him or is the technology harming him? Type in the chat box so that you can you can have a good evaluation for that. Because it's not me as is judging, as everyone can be a good judge too. No, is it harming? So, so can you see the um, Brad? Uh, I pronounced your name wrong. Brad is uh, can you see the comments? Is it harming him or is it helping you? You can see it in the chat box. It's not what I'm saying. So you can see it's actually not helping you. So I would highly suggest for your reference is that uh, you can actually do a proper green screen. So uh, sometimes for a green screen, I'll actually buy like a very nice equipment. Uh, like, like a, let me try to find that green screen part. This is what I would do if I were you, if you want to have a green screen that helps you. Uh, green screen. Uh, I'm just trying to search right now. It is uh, quite impromptu. Yeah, this you one. You showed me three colors, the white, blue, and green. It has yes, the white, blue, and green. And this is actually one example that I'll be using. See see this on the right, on the right hand side? Yeah, yeah. This thing, this white, this green, this is called green screen. So if you yeah. want to get prepared for your virtual green screen to be perfectly fine and fitting you, this is the item that you're going to buy. Okay. Okay, this is just one example. Uh, uh, I noted, I know a friend, just letting everyone know that uh, I know a friend that do not want to spend money on this one. What she did is very impressive. She find a lot of green plastic bags from the shopping mall <laughs> and then stick it together and make her own green screen. And that works, literally works. And it's a very cheap option, $10. Something like a plain green bed sheet also. Yeah, it's, it's a very nice, uh, impressive work that she did. But the thing is that when she switched off that green screen, that background is really awful. <laughs> yeah, just saying. So uh, take it at your own risk if you are using green screen. Now, any other questions here? Hi, Daryl. I'll pick you if you keep on raising your hands. Uh, Daryl, yeah, yes. go on. Can you, hear, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so I just wanted to ask, uh, as a table topic contestant, how, would the table topics be held? Because we are not ready in the physical room. So how are they going to give us the, the topic itself? So, so basically you'll be in the room when it's your turn, okay? Uh, when it's your, let, let me just spotlight myself back again. So you'll be in that room when it's your turn. The Zoom master will move you to the contest room whereby they will give you the question. So if I were you, the best practices would be that I will try to find a timer once I enter that room because it helps me, right? I need to know who the timer is. So I will, yes. if I want to be safe, I will pin the timer as the big screen. And then I will take my step backwards just like what you're doing right now, that you are in your comfort position. Then I'll okay. wait until they say the question. Oh, the question is this. Then I will answer it accordingly. So that is how we do for table topics. So would everyone be getting the same topic? The, everyone will be getting the same topic. Table topics are all the same. If you notice, or if you know that someone is, someone is being 
very, very nice or new to Toastmasters, ask different questions for different table topic contestants. You can't challenge him because it's against, it's not against the eligibility or originality, but you can actually raise a complaint against that person because it's, she's actually breaking the rule. Ah. Uh, yeah, just saying. But okay. the thing is that all the table topic question is the same. Uh, so how to pin? Uh, if you, Anthony, are you using a mobile phone or are you using your laptop? Hi, Anthony. You can unmute yourself for a bit. I know, Sharish, you are next. Don't worry. I know you raised your hand just now. Yes, I'm, using I I'm using my computer. You're using your computer. So if you're using a computer, then uh, now, okay. So I'm going to unspotlight you. Find someone in the whole room, in the gallery view. Find someone, okay? Move your mouse over to his screen. When you move over to his screen, you should see three little dots on the top right-hand corner of that square. Oh, yeah. Hi. Got it, right? You get the pin video button? Yes, yes, yes. Thanks. Okay, done. Uh, Sharish, your turn. Yes, uh, I asked the question is um, the rules that you showed for the contest, uh, rule number 7C, it says that the, all, the, all the audience must shut off their uh, mics and video. Yes. So the speaker doesn't see anybody. Mm, technically, yes, all the audience must switch off the videos and also the audios. Yes, according to the rule book, so, yes. So the speaker doesn't see anyone? No, the speaker still sees some people. Remember the wording is called audience, okay? Yes. So who does the contestant have to see? You know the answer. Okay. He has to see the timer, right? Yes, he has to see the timer, yes. Definitely see the timer. He also has That's to see the contest MC, right? Because introducing himself, right? Literally. Mm -hmm. So there are some people that will be there. But when I say, when the wording is say audience, it means that it's non-contestant or non-contest facilitators. Yes, but the contestant doesn't get any feedback from the audience about their reactions. That's why you can see the timer and you can see the contest MC and look at them. Test for is that, reaction. Is that mandatory? Is that mandatory? Uh, that is... Uh, con Contest timer has to switch on the webcam. So basically, he will be one of the person that you will see. Okay, so basically, you will just look at the timer and then chat with that timer, literally. Okay. That will be one way that you can the pin other, the video of the timer. The other question I had was about uh, table topics. Mm -hmm. uh, when the contestant moves to the breakout room and someone calls him and tells him what the topic is beforehand, then what? calls him and tells him the question beforehand. That's right. Okay, so for my practice in, this is actually related to contest facilitator session, not this one. So we, when we have that situation, just explaining, uh, let me spell it myself again. So when that situation, uh, we actually try our best to reduce that possibility. How do we reduce right. it? It's by limiting to no contestant in my room. So that's only contest facilitator, there's only judges and there is only the relevant people like the contestants that are in place. So basically they are also kind of the audience somehow. Okay. So by reducing the possibility, they will not know the question and tell them by heart. So next question is what happens if a contestant tells the answer to the next contestant? That my only answer is, are you stupid? <laughs> because because they're competing. They are, they are contestants. If you tell the answer to someone else, then, then the other contestant knows your question. And literally, it's not helping them, right? So they would not do something like that. Contest, contestant won't do it, of course. Yes. So that's why like, the judges can't do it. It's against his integrity. So during our contest MC, we will always highlight one thing. Live up to Toastmasters values, which is our integrity. Anthony, you cannot find a tent because I actually spotlight myself. So in the actual contest, there will be no spotlight. So for today, we are doing a workshop, so there will be spotlight. I Aaron, hope that answers you. Thank you very much. Excellent Welcome. workshop. Thank you. Any other questions? Raise your hand if you want. You can bomb. Uh, Hazel, Gary, Hazel first. Because, yeah. Not ladies first because she actually raised up her hand first. Or maybe that's lagginess. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm not sure. Hazel. Um, just, uh, just a question. 
when I'm sitting, you know, I'm looking at the camera in the middle. Okay, suppose I'm giving my speech. When I stand up, I will be higher than the laptop. So you mean to say I need to put something below it so that I can be face to face with the uh, camera? Yes, we do. Uh, sometimes this is actually one of the ways that we try to do our hidden, hidden agendas by putting a book uh, it under it underneath or actually position yourself a bit further until it becomes your eye contact eye level so I actually, I, I, yeah, I actually position I something like pillows like this kind put it okay. below it or even something tougher stronger so that I can lift up the camera or my laptop to a height whereby I can see it at the right eye level so can you see that it's actually at the right eye level for me you can see this actually on the right eye, eye level right I feel like you're looking straight in the middle. You yeah. know? I'm not looking yeah. like, hey, everyone, hello. I'm not looking at there. There's no one there, literally. So I'm actually looking at you with something below it. So there is actually a pillow below it. The same. Just to position myself at the eye level. I hope that answers your question. Gary, please. Uh, yeah, and th this may be sort of building off of Cerise's question, which is... Um, you know, a lot of us may be doing this because of the coronavirus for the first time. So many of my speeches has been in person where I've had that interaction, where I have those jokes in my speech that I'm building off the laughter of the room. So without that laughter or that interaction, what, what kind of suggestions do you have to, for that timing that you would normally give for, for the audience to take in that joke and react to it when you don't have that in the, in the contest? Actually, that is a very good question. Is uh, I think is is the best question I actually hear in my workshop so far for on contestants. So for in terms of humor, it's always quite hard to catch the timing, right? But then when you rehearse and you have been doing in person for some time, you know which part you purposely add the joke. And when you add the joke, give around like five seconds of delay to let the joke sink in. That's usually my practice a bit. But remember, on that day itself, you will see someone that is on mute, but is still showing their face. If you see someone's like, okay, does that mean that I'm laughing? They will, right? You can see that. Yeah. <laughs> they won't say it out because they have muted themselves, but you can see that. No, no, this is screaming in pain, but I'm just saying that the <laughs> mouth. This is some examples that you can see from the live reaction that they are laughing. And that actually helps you to gauge on their laughter and pause it at that moment. I hope that answers your question, though. Yes, great. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Anyone? Uh, Quan, our, our dear friend from District 73. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Aaron. Hi, Aaron. Uh, great workshop. Thanks a lot. My question is, you know, in the normal contest, like for the humorous contest, in the judge's ballot, you have marks for audience participation. So what happens in an online contest? Uh, in an online contest, it's actually pretty subjective now uh, for the, the contest. Uh, one of the tips that I didn't mention today uh, is actually raised by Quan, is, is that my last slide is supposed to be tip number 13, read the rules. Ooh, okay. You need to read the rules. But the thing is, related to your question just now uh, about the audience participation, remember the point that I talk about the tips of connection? Mm -hmm. that connection is whereby the audience participation is included in that yeah. tip. Yeah. So when you build in that feeling that I'm part of your whole story or I'm involved into you, into your, your visualization impact, that mm. means that I'm actually participating in yeah. your speech. So that is yeah. the point. Yeah, right, so hope that You're welcome. Awesome. Any other questions? I can't see, now, now this is where the Gary points comes in. I can't see the response from everyone. So I can't gauge whether you're asking the question or raising up their hand. Uh, can anyone, if you have any questions, please switch on your webcam and raise up your hand so I can see you. Hi clearly. Aaron, this is me. I've raised my hands quite a while now. Sorry to, can you hear me? I'm finding you actually. <laughs> okay. Oh, I, I, oh you, you used the computer version. Okay, so yes. uh, yeah, hi. Okay, I, I just have a quick question because somebody told me that the contestants can choose themselves if they want to sit or stand. I think it should be either or the same for everyone. Do you have an opinion on that? No, no, can you repeat the question? You went too fast that there will be a bit lagginess. 
there. Okay. <laughs> no, so, I've heard that the contestants can choose themselves if they wish to sit or stand. And in mm -hmm. my opinion, I think it should be either or, so the same for everyone. Do you have an opinion on that? Uh, technically, I would say that it's their choice. Uh, they can choose whether they want to sit or stand. Some of them they can't stand because you have to understand there are some people in the world that is disabled, for example. Would you tell someone that is crippled to stand? You won't, right? So there are some people that you have to bear in mind that they have the choice to sit or stand. But if they're sitting, then they have to position themselves that at least my hands are visible on the screen. If you're standing, you have advantage of having your gestures. Literally, they can see at least half your body on that part. But if you have sit, if you sit down, just like just now Gary and I actually did a kind of poor example. If, if Gary can, if you don't mind, let me spotlight Gary for a bit. Okay, so what happened to Gary is that just now when he stands, it's really awesome. Now, notice what happens if he sits down. Yeah, because I've positioned my camera up yeah, higher, Just now you so. did really well. So when you sit down, it becomes I only see your head, right? Right. So you don't want people to just see your head instead of your hands. So this is actually one thing that we'll recommend. Uh, for me, I highly recommend, it's not about everyone doing the same thing, but it's their choice. I suggest that people should stand because it allows on two additional benefits. One, I can project my voice even more clearly with more clarity. My diaphragm is actually not pressurized. Two, I can feel much more comfortable because I'm used to standing up doing speeches, literally. So standing up actually gives me the more of a comfort zone. But for people who are sitting down, it's more focused on eye contact. You see the difference? That it's a different technique to play around if you're using one or the other. Super. Thank you. You're welcome. Any others? Mirama? Yay. Good to see you asking questions. Unmute yourself, though. Okay. A um, little bit weird question, but when I stand up to do a speech, and if you, if you come in to then, you want to, for some parts of your speech, you want to get closer and really connect, right? Is it okay to sort of quite come close and then go back and then come close? So almost you're not standing straight because your head will be above, mm -hmm. but to come in like this. You can, you can, okay? okay? The thing, there is one technique to do so. This one is actually one technique, but if you're doing this, do not back yourself too quickly. So let's say for example, if you're moving forward, move it forward slowly and mm -hmm. then move back slowly instead of moving back too fast. Otherwise, it will be rock and roll. So you can come in, but you have to know how much, as long as your head is in, because if you come yes. in after being out, your head's quite likely to be chopped. About One of it. the elements is always rehearse. Mm -hmm. Rehearse that your face, when you're doing this action, will not be impacted too much. Yeah, because you really don't want to cut your face off, right? That's yep, you do not want that to happen. You cut off when you're doing that online. Yep. Okay, so it's okay to do that. To yeah, you can do that. I, I, have a, I have a Toastmaster that is actually doing forward high and then after which suddenly backwards and then forward on some other points it's not doing like the cha-cha but the thing is um building on the closer impact like people like what is she doing why is she putting her face in front of the camera and then that's actually a nice also another kind of form of connection okay but there is such a thing as too close as well is there yes there's a, such a thing as too close this is called too close too close are we too close okay we're too close no this is no you are fine this is this oh, is okay. called too close all right you, you can see my okay. eyes right literally yeah okay let me let me let me show you what what is this is this is still fine okay this is called too close okay see this so you can only see a part of my face okay and that is like really bad literally okay so only one eyeball is not good but Two so eyeballs are good, no. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Angela? I know you have a question just now. Yeah, um, I've uh, just got a mobile phone and that's what I thought I'd use for our area contest, which is coming up relatively soon. So I thought from what you said that we can't use, um, that we have to use a webcam. So is that okay for um, area contests? the mobile 
Uh, yes. Okay. Let me let me ex let me clear this uh, uncertainty here. You are welcome to choose your laptop or your mobile phone. The only difference between a laptop and a mobile phone is that you have limited functionalities. Okay. Yeah. So it, let's say, for example, if I want just now, Gary mentioned a point. I can't see many people's reaction or face. At least you can see some people through gallery view of twenty five people. At yes. that is the amount. But for a phone, mobile phone, you can see up to four people per page. Mm, and if you mm. pin on them, then you can see one specifically. But if I'm yeah. pinning on my laptop, I can see one big picture with five little squares of people on the top. So which means six people. So yeah. there is a difference in terms of functionality there. Now, right. because some, some people love mobile phones because it's easy to handle. Now, I do yeah. have to admit that mobile phones has its own advantage too. Now, mobile phones, most of the mobile phones are equipped with different technologies. Some of them are even better than laptops. Now, the only downside for a mobile phone okay. is that uh, you, you are more, um, your camera will be limited in that, uh, in that body, like know your stage. You, you'll be limited yeah. in that stage. Yeah. Area. So, and then when you're standing a bit further away, they can't really see your facial expression, etc. Yes. So those are the few considerations. So if you're doing a mobile phone, stand within a moderate distance instead of a far distance. For those of you who are using laptop, you can stand from a far distance, just like Daryl, we can see that. But for mobile yeah. phone, stand with moderate distance. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. And position it on the eye, eye, eye level because for mobile phones, it's easier than laptops because laptops are heavier if you know, if you know yes, where I'm coming Yes, absolutely. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Hi, Calvin. Hi, Aaron. Uh, I'm very curious. I know about the stage and the standing up, but in your opinion, most online champions, do they sit down or do they stand up? Because I've seen very good online speakers who sat down. Um, technically speaking, uh, I know that Dana Jaya can sit down and then still do a good speech. Okay. Uh, it's, sometimes it's the contents that matters, but it depends on some speakers. Like for me, I'm more of a visual person. I usually use dramatic gestures. Marama definitely see me doing a exploding type of speech, which I need to really use my gestures to my fullest potential. That is me. So it's really subjective, actually. Uh, some people win because of the wordings that you use. Some people win because of the impressions that they have left behind. So for my recommendation, uh, it's still the same point. Choose something that you like. There are different techniques. That's the, that's the difference. So for me, if I'm sitting down, I focus more on doing slow actions and trying to build that connection with you so that you feel that I'm closer. The distance matters in terms of sitting down. But for standing up, the difference is whereby you become more dramatic and becoming more of yourself. So these are the two differences if you do the stand or the seat. Is that clear? Hopefully that helps. So what I'm hearing you saying is at the end of the day, it depends on the contestant. That yeah, it the depends action. on the contestant. We, we cannot control. It also depends on the judges to determine who the winner is, right? So even the judges have their own preference somehow. Exactly. Yes. That's why what we are saying is that just be your best. We, we cannot control you to actually sit down or stand up. But for me, I would prefer I stand up because it's more me. Sitting down is like I'm being a professional coach. But if I'm standing up, it's like I'm becoming a professional speaker. Difference. Okay. Thank you very much for your question. Any other questions? Thank you, 83 people still staying behind. So I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm so happy that I'm still yeah. And would you like to, yeah, I, yeah, sure. I noticed you typed a question out just now. Hi, Anne. Uh, I'm sorry, because I'm late for a meeting. So I want to know how to pin the timer. Ah, pinning the timer. Okay, now everyone do the practice now. I think, I think everyone can actually practice right now. So find the person in this whole view. If you're using gallery view, it's easier. If you're using a speaker view, then you only have the limited spot box on the top. Okay, so now everyone in the gallery view, you should see around like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You should see around 15 people that's switching on the webcam. Okay, yeah. now are you using phone or are you using laptop? Laptop. Okay, if you're using laptop, move your little mouse, your mouse, 
your mouse cruiser, find any picture that you want. Anybody that's speaking right now, or not, not just me. I mean, anybody is on the screen right now. Okay, when you put your mouse over, you should see three little dots on that square on top of top right hand corner. Yeah. And then start pinning. Uh, this is called spotlighting. So uh, don't click spotlight, but click pinning. It's just a button above it. Okay. Oh, okay. I got it. So thank you. Thank you. So why is, why is someone from Maria actually calling me right now? <laughs> Yeah, continue. Any other questions? Aaron, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yep, go on. How do, how do you pin the timer on an iPad or a tablet? Because I can't seem to find that option on that. You can't pin the person on the, on the iPad? On an iPad, yes, or a tablet. Okay, so when... Okay, now you're using a tablet, right? So I can't see you where you are right now. Okay, so uh, find a person, uh, find a person. iPad is use your fingers, use your fingers, little fingers. And then find a person that you want to focus on, on that speaker. I I'm going to unspotlight myself oh. just in case. And then if you like that person, tap him gently. One, two, okay? If you hate that person, and then after mm -hmm. which it will appear, on as a big screen. So it's double tap. Double tap, yes. I'm, I'm just doing an exaggeration so they can remember what I'm Perfect. saying. <laughs> <Is that okay? laughs> Perfect, thank you. Perfect, it worked. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, sure. Uh, Glossia? Hello. Hello. Hey, moment. Hey. Hi. Oh, okay. So I have the question, uh, two questions. You said that we should see the timer and we should also be able to see the MC, but can we spot, uh, I mean, pin two people? Um, you're the contestant and you're the MC? Yeah, uh, I mean the timer and, sh or should we just see the timer? You just need to pin the timer. That is your most okay. important ally. You do not need to care about the MC. The MC just introduced okay. you. So second, second question was that if in case it happens that we have a better camera on the phone, is it possible for the time of our speech to actually have two sources? Uh, so we would have the phone to record ourselves and have the computer to see the timer. Okay, so you're using about, like you're talking about two little different twos so that you can focus mm -hmm. on one on speaking and two on just looking at a timer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on the area contest, uh, mm -hmm. the, the contest chair of that, of that contest because the contest chair can decide whether they want it or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and having two devices can be slightly distracting for you as well. Mm -hmm. Because okay. you might be like, I'm looking at my phone and then I have to check on that. There will be potential echoing issues too. Mm -hmm. Because it, these two devices are close to each other. You need some, you need to actually disconnect computer audio so that you can actually make sure that uh, the audio reception will not be over flicking or over complicating each other. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, there'll be like a bursting sound or mm -hmm. echoing sounds that will appear. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. I'll give one more, one more question for everyone. And from people from Taiwan, just saying, uh, I do not know the uh, the the meeting ID for the Taiwan one uh, because I'm actually doing a workshop later on, on there in Mandarin. But for those of you who actually know, please let me know. I know that there are some Taiwanese members here. But any questions other than that? because the Taiwanese one is actually a wrong number. Thank you very much. The, the, the numbers, oh, the last one is, uh, okay. So some people are missing on the numbers. Okay, please, please say your question. Anyone? No questions and everyone feel happy about it? 
Okay, so I, I also did some evaluations for some people, if you notice, like not just Marama, but also people who are standing on the gestures. So let's say, for example, okay, I'm going to do one last example for, for, for everyone. Marama, it's your turn to sabotage me. Give me a question. Can you have a topic? Yes, I'm fine since I'm a, I'm a, I'm a top three champion. I wouldn't say right. top three. Um, what, what, uh, what place would you recommend to visit in, I know you're, I know you're in Hong Kong. So where would you recommend people visit in Hong Kong? Ladies and gentlemen, tell Toastmasters, when we talk about the places in Hong Kong, as a Hong Kong niece, I would definitely recommend no place to go because I've been used to it. Literally, look at everywhere right now. Look at the big Buddha and where people can actually look at the big Buddha itself. Understanding the culture, there's literally nothing to go for. But if there is one place, the one place I would recommend that would connect me to you, that would be a place for food. Any food lovers here? We see some hands over there and I see that lovely smells and everywhere. So this... This food is whereby we feel connected. I definitely recommend a place. This place is my favorite, Chim Sa Cherry. And there's loads of desserts and loads of goodies. If you're a multicultural background, you want to explore the Asian cuisines, those are definitely the place to go. It's not even a place of recognition. It's just a place for your luxurious taste buds. Think about all this savory food of Vietnamese, Taiwanese, and the local Hong Kong dim sums. Yum, yum. Even if I'm eating right now, I'm feeling, I'm dripping saliva. But this is a place whereby we feel connected through food. But food is a place whereby you can understand the rich culture of a city. Food itself brings so much flavor, just like me understanding you. If we think about the places to eat in Hong Kong of the dim sums, think about this historical heritage that our ancestors bring all the way to Hong Kong for you to try. Every mouthful splits the juices of all the hard work of our ancestries. It's just like you wanting to try dim sum right now. So next time when you're coming to Hong Kong, if there's no place to go, at least I can be your food guide to explore all the local cuisines and collecting me to you in, and enriching your life to our Hong Kong culture. Back to you. Okay, I, I just did a demonstration of a very poor table topics, I think. It, it, it's really poor. Literally, I, I think that if I give a 10, this is like only my four points. <laughs> Literally, if you don't believe me, ask those district champions, they know that I can do better. Okay, but the thing is, uh, just showing everyone that I just did all the tips that we have just tried, right? I did this in slow motion. I did it in, in the passion you can see from my face, the excitement, the expression was. And also most importantly is, I give a value of my speech in simple words. Okay, so these are the tips that you can try. Do not raise time because it's table topics is for you to give us the value of that speech okay so this is finishing from my tape co contestant's perspective okay so i hope everyone enjoys this workshop so far and uh, thank you marima for giving me this lovely <laughs> lovely question which basically at the start i have no idea what to answer but the thing is i know the end because my, my stomach is growling with food or hunger. So that's why I think about food. Yeah, so relate with your own emotions. Speak truly and genuinely from your heart. That is whereby we feel connected with you. So that's the end of our workshop for today. I will put the recording online. And thank you everyone much for today. Give us some feedbacks. If you feel you like the workshop, tag me on Facebook and then... Yeah, give us your feedback so I can improve better next time. Okay, so give, give yourself a, a pat on your shoulder for staying until this very day. No, stay until this very moment. The six, 60 people. So yeah, uh, if you want to open your webcam, you can actually take a picture like, uh, or, or do any funny poses so that we can actually do a screenshot. So Selena, which is my lovely existence for, for today a bit, before I go to Taiwan, uh, is that... Uh, uh, let's take a screenshot because I need to run away from this room to the other now.
I hope everyone love it today. I'm doing the Chinese version, Mandarin version now, actually. Now take a screenshot. If you want to open your new webcam, it will be on the group photo. So if you do not want it, we respect you humbly for that. You can switch on webcam unless you happen to have some nice dish or dim sum that is behind your white your webcam right now. Yeah, Selena, take a picture. Okay, three pages, you know that. <laughs> Second page, okay, so one more page to go. My screen is only two page. Okay, then it's fine. Yeah, so thank you very much for today. Uh, every much, give yourself a wave. Practice uh, Adam, the- have you, Are you posting the- uh, I'm posting the YouTube uh, later the, on. The PowerPoint, you said- oh. you yeah, I will also post a PowerPoint for those of uh, on my Facebook uh, account, <laughs> and also on Project Infinity. So if you if you join Project Infinity, you'll see all the latest materials there as well. What is Project Infinity? The the community for Toastmaster clubs with online attendance, just like what everyone is doing right now, online club meetings. This is the community for that. So oh, take care, you, guys. Could you give us the link for that on the chat? Uh, yeah, good good point. Before I I go to uh. Can Teresa, uh, I know Teresa is from District Your 67. Your Facebook link also, I think I am already there. Yeah, I, I know so, you are. Teresa, can you tell the people in Taiwan saying that I will be late by two minutes? <laughs> At the very least, because I will be running away. So this is my, uh, my Facebook. And let me find Project Infinity there. I do not know who is sharing the wrong link, which is a bit funny. For the time for Taiwan uh, for Taiwan training, uh, yes, this is the uh, my Facebook. This is my I wouldn't say my is actually ours because we founded this group with a couple of Toastmasters. That's really hot call. Yeah, so thank you very much. Give us give yourself a round of applause for today. Uh, these are my details on the chat box, and I will leave this meeting um, because I have to go somewhere else to continue my training. I still have six hours to train for contestants today. I can't compete, so I have no choice but train people, right? That's just joking. But yeah, take care and hope everyone feels fun, uh, fun and try to tell these tips to any contestant that you want to help, okay? You guys are all mentors too, okay? Take care, guys. Bye-bye. I hope everyone love it. <laughs>